Hey guys. Hey, from here. Obviously, uh, congratulations on a lightning quick victory. I guess what are the emotions after picking up a win on you know International Fight Week, arguably the biggest weekend of the UFC every year. Uh, it's super fast. Just everything's passing super fast. It's kind of bittersweet. I wanted to get more out of that fight than I did, but it's always good to come over prepared. When you said you wanted to get more out of it, um, when you did drop him, did any sort of like disappointment like wash over you? Like, like, come on, is this all you're gonna have to give me? Is it? Yeah, a little bit. I just gave him a second to get back up because I was like, obviously didn't want it to end that fast. But um, I saw his head snap back, so I was like, okay. You got to finish the job at that point. Just based on the, the, the blow that dropped him, is that something you had scouted and saw on tape, or is it just something you saw in the moment? I just threw a one-two. I didn't even know that he threw a kick, which is really ironic because of um, you know the video that I put out. But I saw when I watched it back that he was throwing a kick, and that was when I landed that one-two, so he's off balance. But no, I just went to throw a one-two, and it landed. I believe you called out Adrian Yanez, is that correct? We couldn't really hear the audio back here. Why specifically do you want Adrian? I just think that's a dog fight. I think it's a, a tough fight, and um, we would put on a really good show, and it would just be fireworks. So I'm all for it. I respect the dude. I do have to ask, because it feels like your name specifically just generates a lot of attention over the last, since your last fight, just on social media, a lot of interviews and everything. Have you noticed? just kind of the demand to talk to you, to learn more about you, to just watch all of your interviews since your last fight? Yeah, there's definitely been more demand from you guys. But it's all right. How was it uh, hanging out with Tony Hawk? It was a lot of fun. He's such a cool dude. He's very normal. He actually reminds me of my uncle a lot, so I just felt like I was hanging out with my uncle for the day. Um, but yeah, very welcoming. Just a great, like, meek, soft-spoken dude. Over here. After your uh, contender series win uh, 10 months ago, I asked you who would you like to fight one day in the UFC, and uh, you said O'Malley straight away. So after tonight making the debut inside the arena for all the fans, how many fights away do you think you are to fighting O'Malley, whoever the champion is? Oh, man, I don't know. That's it's kind of hard to say. You guys are the professionals. You probably know better than I do. Um, I think if we both keep doing our job, though, if I do and he does, then I'm sure we'll see each other eventually, probably within the next two years. I believe that same night of your contender win, you also mentioned that the O'Malley comparisons amongst your friends and family kind of drove you crazy. But I'm not sure if you checked yet on Instagram. A lot of people, when they see your stuff, they just put O'Malley, 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 and yeah. everything. So I mean, what do you make of that? I've gotten used to it. It's whatever. Um, I don't think we're super similar. But I mean, I, I kind of get it. I know what people are doing. Yeah, and if it was up to you, I know you just called out a big name like Giannis. Would you want to fast track into those top 15 guys right away, or would you like to take it more a couple fights at a time and then build your way into there? Uh, I don't really have an answer until after I fight, you know, top 20 and just see how I feel and see how well I do. It's kind of hard to say right now. Last word for me, you're one of the few uh, Nevada-born fighters inside the roster. You're born in Las Vegas, but you also, uh, you're also you from Reno, so how is that dynamic fighting for the UFC based in Las Vegas? Um, it's cool because my like type social circle isn't super into fighting, and it doesn't feel like it's in my face all the time. And if it was, I don't think I would enjoy it very much. So it's really cool. It just like provides like an, an escapism at my home base, which is really important for me, um, as well as just training at that altitude does insane things for your cardio, your hemoglobin levels in your blood. So um, just those two reasons alone are why I enjoy being in Reno. Also, I'd like one more. How did the Ryan Hammers fight go? Not good. <laughs> I looked like Yanis when, when me and Ryan fought. That was like literally what I looked like. So Fair enough. Yeah. Hey, Peyton, back here. Right here, just one. I mean, talking about this run of three fights and then you have this moment, you know, big arena and everything, I mean, <laughs> how did you handle those nerves backstage or was it more excitement? I think it was more excitement. I didn't really feel much. I was just super present and, um, yeah, I didn't feel like any pressure. Everything happens so fast, so you're just kind of, you're just like put on this conveyor belt and then all of a sudden you're in the cage. So. Um, yeah, I didn't have to deal with any nerves.
I'm assuming your emotions are still riding high, but how is it the experience for you? You just got the win, and obviously there's a lot of news breaking around us that you're probably hearing about as you're trying to do your media. Just what's that been like, you know, just everything going on right now with this event? Uh, I haven't even really looked at my phone, so I don't know. But, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. Like, like, the kind of person I am, I just want to, like, suck everything out of it and see literally everything. But I know I'm not going to be able to, so... Um, at the end of the day, all that's important is just staying present, and I'm just going to try to enjoy my night and celebrate how I want to, and I'm sure I'll deal with that later on. But, yeah. Congrats. Thanks. Hey, Peyton. Hey. Uh, I've got some UFC stats here for you. You threw 13 strikes, and you landed all 13, and he threw two, and you landed one. Do you think that's as close to a perfect fight as you can get, or do you regret that he landed one shot? I regret that for <laughs> sure. I landed 13. Yeah, that's what it says here. Really? You guys need to. You guys might need to recount. I thought I only landed like four. 13 of 13, apparently. Interesting. Uh, the way that you fight and the way that you've risen, do you kind of have eyes on the BMF? Uh, that would be really cool, but I cannot see anybody giving a bantamweight a BMF belt. We're just too small. We need like our own kind of thing. I you could say. redefine it then. Maybe, yeah. I mean, that would be cool, but 45ers and 55ers, those dudes are badasses. Uh, Payne, over here. Uh, who, speaking of BMF, who is the baddest guy in the bantamweight division? The baddest guy? Like the scariest or like who, what's a fight that you, like, you, know, that you kind of have goose, goosebumps about? Um, I don't know, the champ, Sean's, Sean's pretty scary fight for anyone. Um, and then Marab, just because of his cardio and his pace. So, yeah, those two guys are a scary fight for anyone. Those are bad dudes. How do you plan on celebrating tonight in Las Vegas? Just going out and getting after it. Yeah, <laughs> you know how it goes. Awesome, thank you. Ben, can I ask uh, just two more quick ones over here? I asked Jalen Turner this uh, a while ago. What's harder on the body, skateboarding or MMA? Skateboarding, for sure. Nobody hits harder than concrete. And skateboarding has derailed so many fighters' careers. Um, and then final one, uh, what's the equivalent of a UFC championship in the skateboarding world? Um, dude, I don't even know. <laughs> like, I don't know, winning an SLS event or the Olympics? Yeah, I don't know. Peyton, right here. You mentioned that uh, your friends help you stay grounded, right? When you have a lot of, uh, you know, popularity starting to swarm a little bit. But how do you adapt to that pressure, right? That now that people are having expectations on you, there, you know, you were a huge favorite tonight. How do you continue to kind of make sure, hey, uh, I, I can take this kind of one step at a time and, and deal with the pressure you have? I think it's just coming back to the reason I got into this and just. You know, not getting fixated on a belt, not going like, oh, I want to be at the top or I want this, not getting fixated on, um, you know, just like objects. And just the reason I'm fighting is just because I want to get into fist fights and cross limbs with the baddest people on the planet. And I enjoy doing it. So I think just that alone keeps uh, my training process and everything else pure. Right on. Thanks so much. Yeah. I was just going to say, uh, whoever your video producer is on YouTube, great job. That's me and William. All us, two people. I just want to address one thing. Um, the vape conspiracy was not me. You can tell in the video that it is a white man. It was one of my dear friends at the time, and you can actually hear me laughing behind the camera. Um, so yeah, I've been pretty quiet about it because it's whatever, but it's just getting it kind of out of hand. So yeah, the vape video is not me, and that's all I have to say about it. <laughs>